Hello everyone. So now we are going to take up the second topic of section A of SA paper 2023, which says the visionary decision making happens at the intersection of intuition and logic. So again, a simple topic in terms of understanding use of word and uh, easy to dissect and finding dimensions. So we will go step by step by finding the keywords, then simplifying the meaning for broadening the understanding, finding dimension and suitable examples to substantiate. So let's begin our discussion. So first thing is to identify the keyword. The first is the visionary decision making. Second is intuition. And third is logic. So visionary decision making is nothing but a future planning, a future planning or a plan for future. Anyway, you can take it. Which encompasses or which includes the elements of wisdom, or prudence. Okay. Now a future planning which includes or encompasses the elements of wisdom and prudence will result into or will be aimed at welfare. greater good innovations you can relate it to any word uh, anything which which becomes a delight for a society for a country anything so visionary decision making is a future planning which Includes elements of wisdom and prudence. Now, the second word, intuition. What is intuition? Intuition, you have, you all use this word. I have an intuition that this is going to happen. What is it? It is just a belief. You don't have any uh, good reason to substantiate or to prove that thing. But you have a strong belief that, okay, this is going to happen. This is my intuition. Okay, so it is a belief without having a good reason to explain. Take for example, you are going for a trekking of say 15-20 kilometer for the first time in your life. But you have a strong intuition that you will make it. Maybe it is because of the level of fitness that you have or, the, or that you may say that I walk around 5-6 to six kilometer daily so I can do that. You don't have any exposure to hilly terrain or anything like that. But you have an intuition, a belief, which acts as a motivation. Which acts as a motivation. Which motivates you to do something. It gives you the necessary level of commitment. The unwavering commitment that okay I have a belief that I will do it now you are motivated and now you are committed to your task so it is the belief now the third term that is logic logic is a simple thing that is rational reasoning approach I'm writing reason here or a systematic approach to analyze a situation, a problem, an event or anything like that. It enables you to find solution out of a problem. It enables you to find solution. Okay. It enables you to 
सिंप्लीफाई द कॉम्प्लेक्स रियलिटीज फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग फॉर सोल्यूशन फाइंडिंग और एनी थिंग लाइक दैट फाइन सो द टॉपिक से इज दैट विजनरी डिसीजन मेकिंग दैट इज अ गुड फ्यूचर प्लान और अ प्लान विच इन कंपास इज विजडम कम्स एट अ इंटरसेक्शन दैट इज वेन यू हैव a belief strong belief compassion passion motivation commitment which is backed by a rational reason or a systematic approach now i want to draw your attention toward a previous year question that history is a series of victory of romantic man over uh, sorry scientific man over a romantic man and in that discussion we particularly focused on one thing that these both the romanticism the passion part the love for something and the rational part that is systematic analytic analysis when they merge then victory comes so it is not that scientific man winning over romantic man or a romantic man winning over scientific man it is amalgamation of two it is synergy between two which results into greatest scientific discoveries so this topic is nothing but an extension of that and you have to take up that approach only where you will discuss it in a balanced manner that yes you should have a passion or belief that will bring the initial motivation then backed by the rational you will achieve something now let us understand this with a example if uh, if you if you want to start your essay with an anecdote you can very well use the favorite of all mahatma gandhi ओके, रेस्क्यूअर ऑफ ऑल टाइम सो महात्मा गांधी नाउ मूव स्टेप बाय स्टेप द इंट्यूशन पार्ट व्हाट वाज द इंट्यूशन पार्ट इंट्यूशन वाज बिलीफ द बिलीफ वाज कैपेसिटी ऑफ मासेस इन freedom is struggle this was his belief he had a strong notion that masses would be the most potent weapon against this foreign rule and with this he added the logic what was the logic a systematic approach he took a tour of india he started his struggle with champaran satyagraha so what he did he had a belief in the masses to get the nerve to uh, the basic understanding of the indian masses because satyagraha he tried and tested in south africa but how it will come out in context of indian masses was something unknown it was mere belief that okay they will also they can also achieve this okay so what he did he take he took a tour of india to understand the problems or feelings or the motivation or anything about indian society indian masses then he took champaran satyagraha he kind of experimented and then came the visionary decision making that his method of freedom struggle would be a non violent mass struggle this was the visionary idea where he assimilated the intuition and logic so you can uh, either explain the understanding by explaining the keywords or you can use such stories you can use 
Nelson Mandela, you can use Martin Luther King Jr., you can use anyone, anyone to highlight that how visionary decisions were made. Okay, so moving on further, if you have used your anecdote as an introduction, then first thing should be significance of the keywords or the keywords themselves, intuition and logic. You should establish that connection. You should establish that connection before moving on to the main body. Okay. So, intuition you will talk about. It helps you to take intuitive leap, uh, leap and uh, when, uh, wander into the unknown, uncharted territory. It gives you the required uh, set of uh, belief in your abilities and capabilities. And logic we have discussed what it can do with you. Then the second part is the synergy. Synergy between the two or the interplay. Now you all know we have discussed that how they are complementary to each other. Now you have a strong belief, you have a strong commitment, you will find for reasons. It will fuel your logical or rational or critical analysis. And in turn, when you will be moving ahead to achieve your goals and aspirations, it will in turn fuel your belief. It will make your commitment even more tendon. Okay, so it will become a cycle, a complementary cycle where one is fueling other. Okay, and you can cite several examples from India and abroad to substantiate that. Let us take few. Uh, in Indian context, story of ISRO. At the time of the independence, when uh, idea of ISRO was floated, everyone, everyone joked, everyone laughed that, okay, you don't have food, you don't have industry, you don't have education, but you are moving to space. But what happened? The belief of the political leadership, the scientific community, and the step-by-step -step logical or rationalist uh, strategy resulted into now ISRO being one of the leader in space technology and is standing among the top five or top six space agencies of the world. Okay, you can give examples of uh, our institute of prominence like IITs, AIMS or IIMs. What was the passion behind it, the idea behind it, the belief behind it? to provide the best education to the generation, to provide world-class education and what was the rational or the rational approach behind them, providing best infrastructure, best machinery, best faculties, designing the exams in a manner so that best brain can be admitted, funding, exposure, everything. And now, you can see Everyone, everyone aspires to get into one of them. Okay, you can talk about the green revolution, struggling to ensure food security. An event happened of uh, imported, um, an event happened of uh, imported uh, food grains from USA, which were kind of demeaning, and suddenly the political leadership decided that yes, we can do it. Farmers stood up to the occasion. They had a belief, yes, we can do it. And when complemented with the rationality or the scientific temperament that, okay, we need certain kind of seeds, we need a certain kind of irrigation, we need a certain kind of uh, fertilizers, pesticide, etc. It resulted into green revolution. Similarly, you can talk about various self self uh, Self-help groups like Seva, Kodumshri, where a belief that yes, 
women can also do wonders started an idea and the rational approach the rational approach gives the uh, give the shape to the best of the self help group for women which became a stellar example again for the world okay so you can cite uh, examples of uh, again as i said you can use nelson mandela and uh, martin luther king junior in introduction you can use their examples here you can use scientific discoveries you can use uh, various initiatives in the world that have been taken which show that yes there was a compassion there was a belief and result was a visionary idea or a decision making if you can quote germany in post world war or japan the rise of japan after world war 2 it was the passion to come out of the miseries of world war and both of them are the developed nation and kind of flag bearer of technology in all the field in all the walks of life so you can quote as many examples as you want uh, to substantiate your argument now the next important thing you have discussed the synergy you have discussed the significance you must look into what will happen if any any of the two like if intu uh, intuition is missing if belief is miss missing or what if a logic is missing so again we will take this up one by one now if logic is is missing what will happen it will result into arbitrary decision making because you will not be able to analyze the situation rationally anyone will say anything and you will just start doing that leaving your analysis and studies on the back seat okay so it will result into arbitrary decision making inconsistent approach one day you are doing anything something other day you are doing anything something different okay and the most dangerous of all there are high chances that you will be misguided you will become prey of others scheme because you have you are not using your rational you are not using your logic i am talking about um, i am taking up all the levels at individual na nation society every level if you will keep the rationality aside in decision making you are bound to get misguided you will lose the track okay same goes if you will lose the passion or the intuition or the belief behind your idea what will happen the motivation factor is gone the motivation factor is gone so this will lead to either you will abandon your journey all together you will abandon a good venture in midway or somewhere in the journey or you will settle for less because you are lacking the requisite level of passion behind the idea so either you are going to abandon it all together or you will be satisfied with whatever you get now you can quote several examples for these arguments also for take for example we often talk about we often talk about the environmental funding okay 
environmental funding now environmental funding as you all know that for environment conservation there are several round of talks and that rio rio plus 20 and all that there was a consensus on one thing that developed nation will provide a certain level of funding to the developing nation so that they can uh, make a transition toward more sustainable form of energy but what happened idea is rational but the commitment is lacking nobody is commitment committed to provide this funding and result everything is hanging there nothing has been done, has been done it's all about mud slinging now they are saying that uh, why we should provide money and developing nations are saying why we should do the uh, why we should do what is required if they are not ready to take the responsibility so again a rational idea lacking compassion or the belief or the passion behind it or commitment behind it resulting nothing second we often talk about political will political will will behind any policy or any uh, scheme or any action if if any policy you you all will agree that policies are framed uh, in the direction or with an intent of giving benefit to the society but if there is lack of political will for the implementation it will go nowhere it is not going to benefit anyone it will be there in papers only nobody will benefit from it so you can quote an example of uh, how if you know that nirmal bharat abhiyan nirmal bharat abhiyan was the name of what, what now you know as swachh bharat abhiyan the scheme was there but the entire apparatus or the government machinery was kind of ignorant about it okay something is there but now when the repackaging and was done and it became a priority for the government the same program with some modified modified changes became an example a global example how it achieved sanitation hygiene uh, and uh, the ripple effect was the change in the status of women also so you can talk about such examples where you can show that okay you have some reason behind uh, some sanction or some policy or some decision but if you will lack the commitment you are going nowhere okay now moving on to the flip side of the example now you have uh, some for uh, another example you can quote from your history a very good example that is mohammed bin tughlaq often termed as wise fool his decision many historians have said that his decisions were ahead of his time so passion was there passion was there but what was lacking lacking the rationality the rational analysis and resulted into a failure you can talk about the vasectomy drive during national emergency where intention was for population control stabilization but method was coercive and resulted into backlash from every walk of life and the final result was a failure so whenever your decision making will lack any of the two you are bound to fail you can cite some other examples for the same if you know these examples for further substantiation the google lens now you you see ar and vr technology from all the leading electronic companies but google was the first company to bring this google lens but the lack of commitment 
to evolve with the emerging technologies or to capture the market resulted into withdrawal of this product altogether. Now it is nowhere. Same if you know about web van. Nowadays you use Blinkit, you use Zepto and other online platform for grocery delivery. But this startup was, if I can recall it correctly, it started in 1999 or 98. This online grocery delivery. But again, the lack of commitment, the lack of passion resulted into financial irregularities and within 2-3 years, this venture failed. So, altogether abundant. Now, some may claim it was lack of passion, some may claim it was lack of uh, planning, but in reality, all these failures are amalgamation of both. Some At some point of time, uh, they lacked vision. Sometime they lacked planning. Same was true with Segway, if you know. They were initiator of the electric mobility. And nowadays they are gone. When you are, say, uh, when you are witnessing electric bikes, electric scooters, electric auto, electric buses, electric cars. Now the initiator, the Segway is gone. Because they wrapped up their business. Same is true with Nokia and Blackberry, who refused to evolve into the smartphone market. They delayed because the commitment was compromised. Same was true with Kodak. Once a leader in camera and uh, film technology, now nowhere near any leading company. If you know the Yahoo, the story of Yahoo, at one point of time, they had a chance to acquire Google as well as Facebook. But they kind of ignored. They did not rationalize or analyze their position vis-a-vis -vis demand of market. And now, they are nowhere near these leading companies. So, all these examples can be cited to uh, substantiate your argument and you can conclude on a, it's kind of summarizing all of your argument that, that yes, the visionary decision making re requires a, an intersection of logic and reason. Thank you.